Um, this is all about a robot, Rosm7134, that wakes up on the shore of an uninhabited island. Um, she is lost but does not yet know it. Um, so she simply moves inland and does what she was designed to do, which is find whoever it is that bought her and find tasks and complete them. And that journey is going to change everything about her and the island that she's on. All the themes and the emotional depth that Peter built into the book um, is what made me want to do it. Um, it was a, everything about it was a space that I felt I could operate in. This is the, it was the kind of thing that I feel comfortable with. And um, as I read the book, all the stuff I saw made me kind of, frankly, desperate to, to do it. Uh, well, it was definitely a, a workshop with Chris. Uh, talking through uh, w where Roz starts off and where she ends up. In the beginning, she has the naivete almost like of a child, you know. Uh, she's kind of like a blank slate in terms of, yes, she's a very sophisticated robot, but she doesn't have any, like, uh, you unique or identifying features from all the other robots that exist. And so, um, and but then by the time, by the end, she has... Uh, adapted and evolved so much that she has something akin to empathy and compassion, right? And so Chris mentioned uh, that the one of the reasons why he thought of me as a good fit for Roz is that he liked the warmth of my voice. That was in the beginning. So we knew that I we would end up closer to what I sound like. Uh, but finding that initial, where we start, Roz, was quite the workshop. It took a few tries. I definitely tried very extreme things. <laughs> uh, but in the end, we ended up with something that is like I call programmed optimism that you hear in like Alexa and Siri and them. Uh, and then as she colors in, uh, she develops more, I guess, uh, dimension and texture in her voice. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that too was found with Chris. We wanted to create a villain that's not just like, oh, I'm big and scary, but, you know, a a robot that is so chipper is like Siri. Like, who really is Siri? Do you know what I mean? Um, and, like, what does Siri want? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> She's listening to all of us. Um, and so if I disappear, you know who took me. It's Siri. Um, but, yeah, so creating a a villain that is so chipper that it's um, disarming and and uncomfortable and that was really fun to find with Chris yeah had a lot of fun doing that you know what Siri means it's Swahili for secret is that, that, true? Is that right? mm -hmm. I don't oh. know why I don't know whether they named her that because of that but yeah oh, nothing that's a that's Jordan Peele's next film <laughs> wow that's good yeah. wow Ooh. that's I'm more scared than I was. Well, I know. you know, <laughs> there are times I'm in my kitchen and suddenly my little Alexa yes. thing says, would you like pumpkin carving ideas? I'm like, how did you know I was thinking about pumpkins? It's so <laughs> chilling, right? I'm yeah. like, well, I didn't say that. I, you know, I, I'd like to think I could be funny sometimes. And, and I tried to give, you know, uh, as much humor as I could to what was already there on paper. But in every, I swear, every line of dialogue, Chris just would just, you know, or you could try. <laughs> no, you never did that. <laughs> Do it like this. That's what you said, I think. Is, no. <laughs> no. no, just always like the best inspiring notes and, and bringing every possible bit of humor out of every line that I had just uh, and out of the character. Just And I also, you know, channeled my mom. My mom had seven, no six, no seven oh. kids, <laughs> actually seven uh, in our family. And my mom was just had her great days and her not so great days and you know but really took the job on of raising all of us I can't I only have two and it's a killer mm. uh, but I love the speech that yeah. Abraz gives and then your warranty what's that that amazing speech oh, about the, the story. basically what motherhood does to you or parenthood <laughs> that so that's funny. such a great speech me, damaged me yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. oh yeah. so good there's a lot of truth in the thing, in 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 your character and and the, yeah, yeah the the assessment of motherhood without romanticism and that's yes. what makes it so funny because it's so true like yeah. you know, saying I'm all the things mother, that but. mothers don't dare to say out loud exactly yeah. <laughs> and allowing us to all that's laugh a about it thankless job yeah but not yeah. <laughs> but yeah yeah. <laughs> 
the visual style um, I felt was really, really critical. Everything we've been talking about um, I don't think would have worked as well if it had been in like a traditional, I think, CG style. Um, and the more illustrated style that we were able to achieve, I think, elevates it to, I think, a level of, of, of sophistication um, that this particular story really and truly needed because it's not a simple story. Um, it's simple in its construction, but its 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 great depth and complexity of characters and messages is is I think worthy of of a of a style that that I think reflects that. So I think I thought it was very very critical that it that it had that sophistication and and softness and beauty and I think it helps like it pulls you in 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 a very different way. And you were saying too that everything was hand painted, right? Yeah. It is, yeah. We were able to. Every single surface is is has a human touch, quite literally. Um, um, the feathers on the birds, and Roz is the only character that is traditional CG, but only when she first arrives, and because we wanted her to not fit in, mm -hmm. and she has a CG surface, it's perfect. And very quickly she begins to weather, and we have about maybe fifteen to twenty different like levels of transformation, so that mid film. She absolutely is 100% hand-painted and belongs there now, visually. So she's settled in, and which is the fun thing about when Vontra arrives, and she's shiny and new, and she has that more sort of plastic surface again. And I think at that point, hopefully people will detect the, the difference. Like when Roz steps into the light and, um, and um, Stephanie's character sees her, it's a bit of a shock because she actually has she has things growing on her and she's weathered and she's she's got kind of a chia pet sort of <laughs> thing going on. Um, but and but she's beautiful. She's beautiful. The more she's weathered, I think the more beautiful she really becomes. That's honestly one of my favorite parts of the film because when I imagine, it, I feel like the movie is also so much about imagination and storytelling and what that brings to a community and when I imagine all the little ones little creatures in my life getting to see this film and that that feeling of the texture of I can like pick up a marker and draw that I think that is like something that is so lost now and this movie really is such a nod to what we all grew up with in the world of animation that I just it's so awesome and alive and human it was such a beautiful open audience they were, it was not a self-conscious crowd that you can get at a festival, <laughs> I think, you know. It was just so open and I thought just, and the movie started out right away so beautiful. Uh, I just instantly thought, oh my God, I didn't, I didn't know this. Did I read this part? Did I know this? Did I, it was just, I just want to see it again right away. Um, but also the, the picture and the sound mm -hmm. and that crowd well, I just, I don't know, you, you explain what I'm trying to say. Well, we were please. both crying. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying crying. to save makeup. <laughs> <laughs> but also, it was so funny. The first, like, I was talking to Jeff, our producer, the first 20 minutes, I was like, that was like slapstick. That was like Lucille Ball in the woods. And he was saying that there was a lot of research with, like, Buster Keaton. And that, that was, like, amazing physical comedy that I was yes. not expecting. So fun to laugh with everybody. And also how... Well, I guess I didn't know because I guess when I went and worked with you, it was mainly about what I was doing, my <laughs> my role. Um, uh, but the the wilderness and how it's such a, it's so violent, and it's all about survival. Yeah. It was just raw, and had nothing to do with compassion <laughs> or well, you know what what all these animals learn throughout the movie, but not in a hitch over the head way at all. It's so subtle and beautiful and natural, uh, but just I. Yeah, it made me realize what a rough world that is. The wilderness. Yeah. Sorry, you say. No, no, that was perfect. That, <laughs> exactly, that was the thing that was just so exciting. The, the idea that like this is an unforgiving place and that Roz wow. sees it as their programming. And that's how, I like that that's how, um, that's how Roz, like she's putting it in terms that she understands. So she says, you're programming and it's a beautiful moment. Um, and it is, they're programmed yeah. to survive. And that's, it's, it's incredibly selfish if they are not, absolutely selfish, they won't see another day. They don't see any other way to, to get through their lives.